horse race is a running race, with jockeys in their flashy silks that drive the speeding steeds. But if urbanites regard thoroughbred races as the sport of kings, country folk look upon harness racing as the king of sport. To them, one of the most beautiful sights in the world is the graceful rhythmic footwork of a fast trotter in action. Here at the Walnut Hall stock farm in Lexington, some of the greatest harness horses are bred. The picturesque and beautiful bluegrass country of old Kentucky, so famous for its production of fine race horses, is also an ideal breeding ground for trotters and pacers. From the Long Stallion Barn, here's Lord Jim, who won the trotting classic, the Hamiltonian, in 1934. These mares, out for a cooling drink and a relaxing splash, are aristocrats of the track, expected to give birth to fleet-footed champions. Champions like Guy Axworthy, a horse hero worthy of his own bronze statue, without a Civil War general perched on top. This neatly kept cemetery bears solemn testimony to the reverence of the real horse lover for Zequine Press. Its graves and headstones perpetuate the names of great racers. But hail to the living. Here's Guy Abbey, sire of Greyhound, perhaps the greatest trotter of all time. And Scotland, sire of three winners of the Hamiltonian Stakes, often called the Kentucky Derby of Trotting. And Volamite, sire of Yankee Maid, current Hamiltonian champion. These foals, now sticking very close to their mares, are all blue bloods of the blue grass. And if they don't grow up to be fine trotters, it won't be the fault of their bloodline. Breaking to halter must start while the foals are still very young, and they don't like it. This one is literally kicking up a fuss. Putting a halter on a foal for the first time is almost as tough as getting your own boy to wear shoes for the first day at school. But when, like fighting Scott, the foal grows up, he'll take his bridle and harness with no protest and be ready, in fact, eager for every workout. Drawing the light sulky onto the track, Fighting Scott will try to improve his time. One of the great drivers, Tom Berry, handles the reins. Here's trotting in all its grace and beauty. Note that the right front foot and the left rear foot are forward at the same time. Then the left front foot and the right rear foot are forward. Combining form with speed is the secret of trotting success. And this filly, Yankee Maid, must know the secret. Experts watching her at this workout in May tabbed her as the favorite for the August Classic, and they were correct. Sometimes a horse is literally afraid of its own shadow, and that fright causes it to break stride, a major crime in a harness race. This shadow roll on True Chief will prevent him from seeing his own shadow. True chief's gait is the pace. Because of this gait, painters have a tendency to sway from side to side, and for this reason are sometimes called side wheelers. After workouts, horses and drivers are hot. Horses are carefully cooled off by groom, and drivers are cooled off by mint julep. Major League of Trotting is the Grand Circuit. After spring training in Lexington, the horses move on to meets in cities as far north as Old Orchard, Maine, as far west as Milwaukee. The season lasting nearly three months reaches its peak at Goshen, New York, home of Good Time Park and the Hamiltonian. For most of the year, Goshen is a quiet, sleepy village, housing about 3,000 people, center of a truck garden and dairy area. Good Time Park is a deserted track. 
its ticket windows gathering cobwebs, its grandstands empty. Then one day in August, presto, as if by magic, the sleepy village becomes a teeming city. Thousands of persons come from miles around to fill the parking lot, crowd the stands and line the rails. They have come to watch the most famous of spotting races, the Corn Castle Derby, the Hamiltonian. These are true fans of a great American sport. Unlike many thoroughbred race devotees who have never been nearer to a horse than the inside of a bookie joint, these people have come to watch the race. Half of them won't do any betting at all. Most of the rest will wager modestly. They get more kicks from the sport itself than from the attendant gambling. Scoring down, permitting horses to get in stride before the race is officially started, is quickly accomplished, and the big event is on. Yankee Maid, who came from behind to win the first heat, takes the lead right at the start this time and stays in front. Third driver is Henry Thomas. 57-year-old son of a Cherokee Indian. Twice before Thomas has driven winners of the Hamiltonian, so it may be safely said he knows his way around. Skillfully, he keeps the fleet filly ahead of her pursuers, ever widening the gap of daylight between his sulky and the nose of the second horse. As Yankee Maid sweeps through the home stretch, Swiftly, smoothly, the purring wheels hum a song behind her, a song of victory. This win gives driver Thomas his third success in the Hamiltonian, one shy of a record, and it definitely makes little Yankee Maid the queen of the harness racers. <laughs> 